Okay, um, so back to number five. I was trying to get it all done in one video, but I couldn't. So now I'm going to go back and fix a couple of little things that I rushed through and one thing that I screwed up kind of on. This positive morphed into a negative in a line here. So this should be plus, this should be plus, this should be plus, this should be plus. And when that's plus, you really honest and goodness do get 4.4. .4. Okay? Sorry about that. I had it done, and then I just um, didn't look at what I had done until I got to the answer. So when you square 2.2, you get 4.84. And then you're actually going to subtract 4.4 here. And so you get, <coughs> sorry, or 40... Um, 0.44 here, and so you get 4.4, okay? And then when you take the square root, you get this, okay? So what it means then is your two times for Jerry are 2.2 meters per second plus 2.0976 meters per second over 0.4 meters per second squared, and that's going to give you a positive number of 10... 0.744 seconds. So this is delta T of Jerry, and this seems reasonable. But when you do the negative number, you also get a positive time. So 2.2 meters per second minus 2.0976 meters per second over the 0.4 meters per second squared gives you a time for Jerry of 0 0.25596 seconds. So they're both positive, so you might think we can keep both. But the question asked you what would be the time for the friend to catch up. And remember the friend's time is Jerry's time minus a half a second. So if we take a half a second off Jerry's time, this first one will get 10.244 seconds. That's fine. If we take a half a second off the 0.255 seconds, we're going to get a negative. And so we cannot be this one because the friend can't have a negative time. Okay? Uh, the second part of the question wants to know how far from the start are they when they're even. So since we found... Jerry's time, I would be tempted to then go over here and put it in for Jerry. So delta D of Jerry is equal to one-half, two meters per second squared, times that 10.744 seconds squared. And when you do that, you should get a delta D for Jerry to be 115.4345 meters. You could then take a half a second off of it and fill it in this one for the friend. So delta D of the friend is one half 2.2 meters per second squared, and then it's 10.244, et cetera, seconds squared. And lo and behold, when you do that, you should also get 115.4345 meters. But they don't work out to be exactly identical. It's because you rounded your time a little bit somewhere along the way. Okay, and then the last part of the question is what is their ex respective velocities when they're even? So you're looking for their VFs. So probably the easiest way to find their VFs is to use A equals VF minus VI over delta T. This is probably the easiest because the VI goes to zero. So their Vs are just going to be their As times their delta Ts. So A for Jerry, or excuse me, Vf for Jerry will equal A for Jerry was 2 meters per second squared, and the time for Jerry was 10.744 seconds. A for Jerry is equal to, what is that, 20, 21.5. Twenty one point four eight eight maybe meters per second. And then uh, VF for the friend is two point two meters per second squared times the ten point two four four seconds. 
Okay, and the VF then of the friend. Oh, I wrote A up here. Let me get rid of that A and let me get rid of this A. This is VF, sorry. Uh, VF for the friend then works out to be 22.5369 meters per second. It should make sense that the friend ends, ends up going faster. If he didn't, he'd never catch Jerry because Jerry had that half second lead. Okay, so there it is, quadratic subbing in for time. Isn't it a wonderful question?